In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the DevWatch rules after the release of the Space Marine Codex and the stealth update to our DevWatch Index from the previous week, which turned out to be not quite what we might have hoped for. In the first part, we will go through the relevant changes in the light of the Codex release itself. In the second part, we will then look into what this potentially means for the Death Watch and how to move forward with our current set of rules. Lastly, there will be my personal conclusions and a quick summary of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temer and I will be guiding you through this video. Diving right into the Space Marine Codex related changes for the Death Watch, the good news here is that we do now have access to a far wider range of detachment options. Just like with the Gladius Task Force detachment, that was already present in the now retired Space Marine Index, when playing Death Watch, we can choose to pick any of the seven detachments present in the Space Marine Codex instead of going for our unique Black Spear Task Force detachment. Given that the latest balance status late significantly lowered the power of our unique detachment, this is certainly welcome. In a previous episode, I covered the impact of the balance status late on the Death Watch, the link is in the description. Furthermore, GW confirmed in a recent MetaWatch episode that the next balance status slate will arrive in January next year, which means that aside from points, no major rebalancing can be expected anytime soon. As far as the new Space Marine detachments are concerned, I will look into these in more details in an upcoming episode. Anyway, back to the rules changes themselves, one further change that was already previewed on Warhammer Community before the actual Codex release was that out of moment available to all Space Marine armies will lose access to the wound reroll, making it far less potent. This is not only relevant because Death Watch has access to out of moment itself, but our Tomb of Ectoclades enhancement also ties into this rule. Furthermore, Vanguard veterans without jump packs have been moved to Legends, which is particularly relevant for Death Watch, given that both our Death Watch veterans, as well as Proteus skill teams, can attach leaders based on the rules of Vanguard veterans without jump pack. As a result, these data sheets would require an update. Then last and not least, the power fists on the aggressors got updated to hit on a 3 plus instead of a 4 plus, but as I already covered back in my Death Watch Index review, given that all kill teams now have their own data sheets listing all models and weapons, every weapon update now also needs to be updated on the kill team data sheet or they won't count. On that note, and perhaps a bit surprisingly, Inceptors received no changes whatsoever, neither in rules nor in points, meaning they remain as powerful as before. Anyway, all in all, these are quite significant changes, and one would expect a non-Codex compliant Space Marine Index update to follow in the light of this. Ironically, it did last week, but all it did for Death Watch was basically updating the balance status late changes, aka nerfing special issue ammunition. Any of the points mentioned above, aka the impact of the old changes, Vanguard veterans retiring, or aggressors getting better power fists were not addressed at all, leaving Death Watch partly in rules limbo. As it currently stands, the once per battle ability from Tombs of Epiclades allows us to both hit and wound reroll into the oath as well as the additional target, which is a good thing, making this enhancement incredibly powerful. Nothing to see here GW, moving on. On the flip side of things, both Death Watch veterans and Proteus kill teams now lose access to most leaders, basically being limited to the Watchmaster and Captain Artemis, and the Death Watch veterans can still be led by Inquisitors, because they are battle line. 
Then finally, our aggressors in an endometer kill team still swing their power fists at the 4+, which is ironic given that the Death Watch is supposed to consist out of veterans. With the basic rules changes covered, what does this mean for the Death Watch? Well, overall, I would say that this lack of rule support is both discouraging and concerning. As I mentioned in my Death Watch Index review, with kill teams getting their own data sheets, a continued rule support is paramount to keep them competitive in the long run, and GW has a history of just not doing that for Death Watch. Unless, of course, it's specialist germination, in which case the FAQ is out even before most of us played their first game of 10th edition. Anyway, for those Death Watch players willing to stick with our Black Spear Task Force, the good news is that I personally think that the negative impact compared to pre-Codex Space Marine release is minimal, for whatever it's worth. Given the massive price tag of the Proteus kill team, these are likely going to be limited to a single one, if at all, in most competitive lists, and having them led by a Watchmaster still makes for an excellent combo, if one is still willing to invest such a high amount of points into a single unit. Furthermore, I think with the changes to Rights of War only affecting battle tactic stratagems anyway, running multiple captains in our unique detachment became less relevant, and what I for instance did was attaching an Inquisitor for the chance of CP regain to my Death Watch veteran Brink of 10 models instead. This will still be possible now. Then lastly on the negative side, our Indometer kill teams are limited to two aggressors only, and this kill team is one of the best units to still use our gutted special issue emanation on, while the melee output is best carried by a Thief of Secrets captain, so while the weaker power fists on the two aggressors are an unfortunate oversight, they won't really affect the overall output of this particular kill team combo too much. On the flip side of things, Tomb of Ectoclades is amazing now, and let's pray to the God Emperor that GW will leave it at that. Ultimately, I think our detachment already got hit far worse by the recent balance status laid and points changes, rather than the release of the Space Marine Codex and its corresponding changes. Having said that, I think the leader issue becomes a big nuisance the moment we start looking into alternative detachment options, which is quite reasonable given the mentioned nerfs to ours. Viable detachment for Death Watch, such as the Firestorm Assault Force or the Vanguard Spearhead have a good selection of battle tactic stratagems, and we might have wanted the option to include more captains to Proteus kill teams or Death Watch veterans. Furthermore, I think what really stings here is that when we go look at the Vanguard Veteran Entry Legends, it references to Assault Intercessors, which would mean access to a Captain, Lieutenant, Apothecary, Judicier, Ancient, Tech Marine or Chaplain. This would be absolutely massive, and I think it would give Death Watch players one more good reason to look into playing a different detachment after all. All in all, I think that the release of the Space Marine Codex is leaving Death Watch in an odd position. While the lack of rules updates is annoying by itself, its downsides should have little impact on competitive lists still running our Black Spear Task Force detachment. In contrast, Tomb of Ectoclades received an incredible boost. However, that said, the detachment itself got severely hit by the balance status late already, as such, having access to a new leader option would have been a welcome compensation for sure. This then becomes even more apparent the moment we start looking outside of our unique detachment. In the recent MetaWatch episode, there was no mentioning of Deathwatch struggling, and even if they would notice, then there won't be another balanced status late release until January next year. Furthermore, given the fact that they stealth updated the indexes of the non-codex compliant chapters well after the release of the Space Marine Codex, but without considering these changes, we might be in for a longer way. Or if they follow through with their previous treatment of Death Watch, they will nerf Tomb of Ectoclades and ignore the rest, 
it will honestly not surprise me at this point. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the Deathwatch rules after the release of the Space Marine Codex and the stealth update to our Deathwatch Index from the previous week, which turned out to be a huge disappointment. In short, while Deathwatch now has access to all the additional detachments that can be found in the Space Marine Codex, its release also put us somewhat in rules limbo on several fronts. On the positive side, our Tomb of Ectoclade still follows the old Oats of Moment rules, which is great, but that's pretty much where it stops. Both Proteus kill teams and Deathwatch veterans lost access to a majority of leaders due to the retirement of Vanguard veterans without jump packs, and our aggressors in the Indometer kill team now hit worse with their power fists due to their weapon entries not getting an update. While the overall negative impact on competitive lists still using the Black Spear Task Force detachment should be minimal and the tomb is a great boost indeed, that detachment has been hit severely by the balanced status late already. In turn, once we start looking into alternative detachments, the leader issue becomes far greater. Overall, I think GW really needs to look into updating the non-codex compliant chapter indexes properly and address these rules decrepancies. Until then, we are indeed stuck in rules limbo. So that's it for the Deathwatch rules after the release of the Space Marine Codex and the lack of updates to our index. How do you guys feel about these changes to both the Deathwatch and Space Marines in general? Which new detachment are you going to look into? Let me know in the comments. Then finally, if you made it this far and I still have your attention, if you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. For that, I have both a coffee as well as a Patreon page, links are in the description. Furthermore, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.